Chase and tackle is probably the easiest, although it can be the hardest without the glitch that I'm going to show you. As you have to make just about every single tackle for no gain to get gold, and you will often make a good play on the running back only to see the game completely screw you by locking you into a broken tackle animation that you can't do anything about. Oh, then watch the running back slowly jog into the end zone, completely wiping out the multiplier that you needed to get gold, and put your kicker or punter in the starting quarterback position and at that point, you can almost put the controller down and just watch the punter at quarterback continuously fumble the handoff while getting a fumble bonus every single time. Making the final score often result in obscenely high multipliers and final numbers that are way higher than the required amount. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. When playing in a Madden franchise, training exercises are the most important thing you can do to build your team, but you have to get gold every time to maximize the benefits. As doing this can get you the most XP to build your players, but can also get you things like upgrade points to use on that player right away, and you can evenly instantly unlock development trait upgrades while doing them in training camp, and even when doing them in a weekly strategy training on your focus players. So it's really important to unlock these extra focus player spots as quickly as possible in your franchise staff talent tree called after school tutoring and make sure to buy all three of this so you can have a total of six players that you can boost up every week the best players to focus on are young superstars and x-factor players if you have them as they will build much faster since the xp requirement for their next level is the lowest with these players on average making them much quicker to build if you look at jalen hurts here he only needs under 10,000 xp to get to an 88 because he is a 26 year old superstar dev trait compared to hassan reddick who is a 29 year old superstar and needs more than double that so try to focus on younger players with high dev traits next up i'm going to go over how to get gold in every training camp game starting with offense and working my way from right to left on the screen but before i do if you guys want to see more videos like this please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video and the channel and i appreciate the support the first game is target passing the easiest way to get gold in this competition is to break as many floating targets as possible as hitting these will increase the multiplier every single time you do so which is important when it comes to getting the high score needed so don't worry about things like the catch bonus it's also best to hit more than one at a time as this can increase the bonus twice in one round to do this is pretty easy as you just want to move your quarterback outside the pocket so you can line up several for the throw so make a plan on where you're going to throw before you hike the ball to see which two are the closest together so that you can hit both of them with your target. Then move your quarterback in a way that you are close enough to the target so that you can throw through both of them, as this may require sprinting to the spot, but it will make the challenge that much easier to get that coveted gold score. Pass scaling and outmanned can be very easy too depending on how well you read defenses, as all you really have to do is complete every single pass, as this is what adds to the multiplier this time. So routes like drag routes and out routes are key, but you have to make a plan before the play starts once again. It's often best to read the defense before you hike the ball, but if you don't know how to do that, I already made a video about how to read and beat every single defense. That will help. And I will leave links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. But most importantly, just remember to do things like limit your reads pre-snap, be patient, and look for space more than anything. Doing the correct catch function, especially safe catching by hitting the air X button, whether on Xbox or PlayStation, can be the difference between a catch that keeps your drive going or a drop that kills all your momentum, but you will have to complete like 10 or more passes in a row at least to get gold in this competition. Rushing attack is probably one of the easiest to do as you really only need to follow your block and sprint away from the other defender most of the time, but the margin for error is pretty small once again, as you have to essentially score every single time to reach the goal for gold. But that's easy enough as there are really only several variations of runs that can come up, and the majority of them require you just to run a certain pattern with the running back. For these straightforward looks like this, just follow the blocker then sprint outside. But on toss plays like this, the blocker will usually miss. So when you get this run play here, just sprint upfield towards the defender to get him run straight before running back outside. And you'll notice that the defender can't change direction fast enough to stop you. If you want to make it even easier, you can go to your depth chart and arrange it in a way that it makes you face your worst linebackers on the team. To do this, just go to your depth chart and put your slowest linebackers in at every linebacker spot and sub package linebacker spots as well. If you don't have slow linebackers, you can also sign ones off the free agent market. The slower, the better, as all you really have to do now is run around them for 
for easy touchdowns. You will also want to make sure that you put your best blocking tight end or fullback in the lead blocking fullback position as well for better blocking. And all this will make the competition as easy as possible. Wide receiver battle is another mini game where it's beneficial to change the depth chart by putting your slowest cornerback at your top position on your depth chart so you have to face against them in this game. But if you run the route that I'm going to show you guys, it really doesn't matter. As I'll run a variation of a spin dig route every single time to get to the 400 marker on an out route area of the field. So I actually like to run this against the best cornerback on the team in Darius Slay. As all you have to do is run upfield before trying to force the cornerback inside, then run back outside of the 400 yard marker. When you get outside, just bullet and pass lead early enough so that you can safe catch the ball in bounds and repeat this route over and over until you master it. This route works best if you get off the jam to the outside, but if you get jammed inside, just come back towards the quarterback before breaking outside and it works the exact same way. As you can see how easily we can repeatedly get this route open. We're going to use the exact same route concept on the next wide receiver battle in the red zone attack with a much slower receiver in Devontae Parker. As you can see, you really don't need the receiver to be special in any way to repeatedly get this route open. As I often do this challenge with a backup tight end, and I get the exact same results. For a trench battle, it really comes down to the player you're using as fast players like Nolan Smith can get dominant swim move reactions right away and have so much speed you can often just touch the lineman and walk away. But you need to engage and beat every lineman to get the multiplier needed. If you're using a slower, more power-based defensive lineman like a defensive tackle, you really just have to swim move one way, then the other, and you will get the lineman off balance if you time this correctly like I am here. Doing it too fast and shaking too quickly can also not register that you beat the block, so take your time and engage so that you can unlock the multipliers needed. Chase and tackle is probably the easiest, although it can be the hardest without the glitch that I'm going to show you. As you have to make just about every single tackle for no gain to get gold, and you will often make a good play on the running back only to see the game completely screw you by locking you into a broken tackle animation that you can't do anything about. Oh, then watch the running back slowly jog into the end zone, completely wiping out the multiplier that you needed to get gold. You can do this pretty easily as long as you don't get too many of those animations, and I did one just to show that you can use the cut stick, which is probably the best tackling method in this game game mode, but if the game's going to cheat you, why not cheat back? As all you have to do is go back to your depth chart and put your kicker or punter in the starting quarterback position and your fullback or running back with the lowest carry rate in at the running back position. I went as far as to sign a fullback with the lowest carry rate on the free agency market just for this purpose. And at that point, you can almost put the controller down and just watch the punter at quarterback continuously fumble the handoff while getting a fumble bonus every single time only guarding when the handoff is successful, which will be rare. And this is because most punters and kickers have a trigger happy or worse in their player traits under sense pressure. The worse this is, the harder it makes for them to complete a simple handoff, making the final score often result in obscenely high multipliers and final numbers that are way higher than the required amount. For DB battles, we will once again go to our depth chart or even the free agency market to find either the slowest receiver or the slowest tight end possible, and then put them in the number one spot at the slot receiver position. And he will be the guy that you'll be facing, making it much easier to cover him. If you take the slowest receiver, you can often find someone who is short, but I chose to take the much taller and much slower tight end so that I can recover faster and cover up any of my mistakes. For DB battle, it shows the route that the tight end's going to run, so I just have to follow that route pattern and stay close enough to the receiver so that I can make easy interceptions or even pass breakups. But just remember, there are no penalties in practice, so you can play as physical as you like to make sure that the receiver doesn't catch any balls. And since the tight end is usually taller, try to play underneath him so that you get a better path to the ball, as they can often moss you if you're out of position. DB Battle Red Zone is different though, as you cannot see the route that's being run during the play. So for this, we're going to use a function that not a lot of players even know exists in the press slash chuck receiver function, while also holding and interfering as much as possible since once again there are no penalties here as it's really only my goal to keep him from catching the ball and I don't care about the rest. I will still be going against a slow tight end so that I have the recovery speed advantage but once the play starts I will just press or hold the air X button whether on Xbox or PlayStation once again and down on the right stick constantly pushing into the receiver the entire route and this function will let the receiver guide me throughout the route until the ball is thrown. At that point I have to either adjust to the ball to make a play or just PI the fuck out of this tight end to make sure that he doesn't have any chance of the ball. For field goal accuracy, you just have to take your time and start the kick meter when the target is closest to the middle as possible or even slightly before. And this will line the time up for how long it takes for the kick meter to fill once the ball is kicked. So take the time to line up your kick 
and just hold the A button at the bottom until the target crosses the center before letting it go and it will result in a perfectly timed kick every single time. And last but not least is Coffin Corner. There really aren't any cheats here. You just want to take your time and make sure that you're putting the ball inside the five and not let it go out of the back of the end zone as you're going to want to make sure that you have this last circle here aimed directly at the red marker so that it will only go out and won't go through the back of the end zone. So that's this video. If you guys want to see more tip videos like this, I'll have links to some other tip videos that I recently put up popping up on screen, including how to read and beat every single defense. So if you guys want to see that, just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.